Hey guys, so I've done a ton of reviews on my channel of in-ear monitor systems from cheap to expensive ones. And the ones that I've been asked the most about in the comment section is to check out the ones by Ann Leon. Hopefully I'm saying that right. In today's video, we are checking out the S1 as well as the S2. The S1 is a wired in-ear monitor solution that is very affordable and is stereo. And then the S2 is a very cheap entry-level wireless solution. So we're going to check those two out. There is a third one, the S3, which is a higher end one, true stereo, has more features than the S2 and stuff like that. That is going to be in a separate video. This video, we're going to go over the S1 and the S2. So I do want to say thank you guys for suggesting this one. So I did reach out to Anleon and ask them about this product, and they did agree to send me one of each of all three, the S1, the S2, and the S3. This is not a paid video. They just sent it to me to check out. All the opinions in this video are my own, but I do want to thank you guys for suggesting this one because they did end up sending it to me when I told them that I got a lot of questions about this one and they agreed to send me some to review. So thank you guys for that. I appreciate it. And because of that, I will be giving away the S2 at the end of this video. So be sure to stick around to the end of this video to find out how you can win the S2 for yourself. But before we get started, I post videos like this all the time, stuff on wireless, in your monitors, gear reviews, I do gear giveaways. I find cheap stuff for musicians on Amazon that actually works, stuff like that. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell to be notified when I put out new videos. And hitting the thumbs up button is a free way to support the channel. Before we get started on checking these products out, if you know nothing about in-ear monitors, you should watch my beginner's guide to in-ear monitors to know what they do and how they work. Watch that video first if you know nothing about in-ear monitors and then come back and check out the reviews on this product. All right, so let's check out these products. All right, so starting with the S1, this is everything that you get in here. Obviously, it comes with the manual. It does come with a power supply, and I'll address this here in a minute. So you can plug it in here and use it with power if you want, or you do have this compartment right here so that you can use it with a 9-volt battery, which is the way that I'm going to be doing this. FYI, I did not ship with one, so you will have to get one of your own. So now the battery is installed, and you can see when I push the button here, you can see that the light turns on on the top right there. As far as just a battery indicator, green means it's good, red means it's about to die. So on the front here, you have a spot to plug in your headphones, you have volume control, you have balance control, which matters with mono or stereo, and I'll show you what that means here in a minute. So on the back, you have the power input, and then you have two XLR inputs. It is nice that they give you XLR inputs. So in order to use this, you're just going to plug in whatever signal you're trying to send to this headphone mixer. So if you're just getting a single in your monitor send, just want to run it in mono, you have that as an option, but this does run in stereo. So whatever you're trying to send to your headphones, you're going to plug in here in the back. So up here in the front, this is where you plug in your headphones that you're going to listen to. FYI, these are the $20 CCA in-ear monitors. I did a review on these in-ear monitors that you can get on a budget for $20 to $50. These are the $20 ones. Obviously, you have your volume control right here. So if you need to turn it up or turn it down, that's how you do it on this right here. So as far as balance, you have two different modes that you can be in. You can be in stereo or mono mode. If you are in stereo mode, that means you're getting, you know, a stereo signal plugged in back here, usually from like, you know, an in-ear monitor mix and you're running it in stereo and you are sending a stereo mix into here. If you're getting a stereo mix, you're going to want it to be set at noon. But if you do want to start panning a little more to the left or panning a little bit more to the right, that's how you're going to do this here. Now, what you're going to do when this is in mono mode, so if you are just getting a mono signal, you obviously want it set to mono and that's where you're just going to plug one XLR cable in. However, if you plug in two XLR cables in the back and set it to mono, you get more of what's plugged into the left when you go this way and get more of what's plugged into the right when you go this way. So that can be really helpful. So say if you're using this just for vocals and guitar or something like that, you're just, you know, a solo performer and you want to hear just vocals and guitar in your ears. If your vocals are plugged in in the left and your guitar is plugged in on the right and you're like, oh, the guitar is a little loud. I need to hear more of my vocals. You can turn it to the left to hear more of your vocals and vice versa. If you need to hear more of your guitar, you turn turn up right. So you'll still hear the sound in both ears when you're in mono mode. You just get more of what is plugged into the right or more of what is plugged in on the left. Pretty cool. So it does come with a clip so that you can attach it to like your belt or something like that. It's pretty sturdy. It's actually kind of tough to pull, but I mean, that's a good thing. It won't fall off. It's a little bit bulky. You know, you can see the size of it compared to my hand. So it's a little big, but you can wear it as a belt. It does have a 
spot here for to clip on to a mic stand, which is really nice. So especially for like drummers or keyboard players, if you need a way to like mount this or something like that, you can mount this to a mic stand and just have it living on a mic stand and right next to you so you can turn it up or down. And that is basically how this device works. Pretty simple. All right, so with the S2, so this is your wireless. So it comes with transmitter, receiver, and power supply. Plug in the power supply here in the back and then hit the power button in the front in order to turn it on. Here in the back, you can see this is where you're gonna get your inputs. You're gonna plug in your signal back here, whether you're getting a mono or stereo. So if you're getting mono, just plug in one. If you're getting stereo, plug in two. Plug that into the back. And that's again, wherever you're getting the signal from, from a mixer, from a sound guy, whatever you're getting the signal sent to your in-ear monitors from, you're gonna plug in back here. This one is nice because it does have XLR or quarter inch inputs. So you can get either one, which is really nice at this price point. I reviewed some that are like only 3.5 millimeter, which is obnoxious, or only RCA, which is obnoxious. This is really nice that they've included XLR or quarter inch. In the front, you have very minimal controls. I'm just gonna unplug this so it's just easier to film. So are you getting a stereo signal or a mono signal? If you're getting a mono signal, you want it to set to mono so you get sound in both of your earbuds. I did a video explaining this if you want to find out more about it. This volume control right here is just for this headphone out. So that is completely separate from what you get on your receiver. Most people won't even be using that, but just in case if you want a secondary out, you have that option right here. So what you could do is you could, you know, you can get uh, a signal sent here and then this could go to like your drummer. And then if you're a singer or guitar player, this could go to you and you would share a mix that way. Your drummer would be wired and you would be wireless. That's an option. And then here you have your six different channels that you choose from. So you're going to twist it to whatever channel you want to be on. So I'm going to set this to channel four for right now. So this is the receiver. Put in two AA batteries. You have very minimal controls with this. Turn it on, plug in your headphones up here. And the only control that you have on this device is to change the channel. So you push the channel button and it'll change. So you can see right now I'm currently set on channel two. Push the button, changes to channel three. There's actually a bit of a lag. Watch how long it takes. So I'm gonna push the button now. That's how long it takes to change the channel. So it does take a little bit of time. So a couple of things that you get. So you get to see what channel you're on, what megahertz frequency that is transmitting on. You do get a battery indicator, which is actually really nice. It's awesome that they give you that. And then you get a signal strength indicator right here. So this is actually really cool about this system, especially at this price point. So I currently have this off. This system is off and it has given me that strong of a signal on channel six. That means I'm very likely going to get interference. So when I push the button again, you can see on channel one, I have nothing showing up there. There's nothing showing up on that bar. That means that this channel is currently clear. Push the button again, go to channel two, channel two is clear, channel three is also clear, channel four is clear, channel five is clear, but something currently Oh, well now they cycled through it, it says there's nothing on channel six. So that's kind of interesting that that happened. But it will tell you if you are getting, a, if there is already a signal being taken. So that can be very valuable. And that's one of the things I recommend doing is you turn on this system. If you see that you're already getting a, a signal with your transmitter off, that means that that channel is already taken. So now I'm gonna turn this on and you'll see channel four will now say, oh, the signal is very strong because this is set to channel four and this is set to channel four. Channel five is not busy. But yeah, so you want to set these to the same channel. So set the channel on your receiver, set the channel on your transmitter. That is basically it. Again, this lives on you, on your belt, pants, shirt, dress, whatever you're trying to do. And you control the volume of the signal up here. Very, very basic setup, super minimal, but that's, that's basically everything that you need in a wireless in-ear monitor system. Okay, so as far as specs, there wasn't really anything in the S1 that I really needed to go over, except that it does have a limiter. So that's pretty nice. Everything else I pretty much went over. For specs for the S2, the battery life is up to 12 hours, which is pretty nice. The operating range is 100 meters. I would be very curious about that. If you're getting something in this budget point, you shouldn't be going over 100 meters anyways, but I would say it could definitely go 50 to 100 feet, which is pretty standard. Um, the thing about this is that these have four different frequencies 
frequency bands. You can get 526 to 535, 561 to 568, and so on and so forth. Most of the time, these cheap in-ear monitor systems are on 2.4 gigahertz. If you've seen my video on 2.4 gigahertz, you'll know it's actually the least reliable frequency. So this is awesome that this system is in the UHF frequency band. You do have to notice that it is very minimal of the frequency range. You know, there's only nine megahertz of RF tuning bandwidth or range of which you can find a clear signal. And there's only six available channels within that range. So that is a little bit, but at this price point to have six channels, channels, that's actually quite a good deal. If you want more channels available, you have to pay more. And that's what, you know, the S3 is for, which you can see why it has more available channels. And that's one of the main things you're paying for with that. But the specs on this are incredibly awesome, especially for the price. Speaking of the price, the S1 is currently listed at about $44. And the S2 as of shooting is $90. I see it fluctuate all the time from 80 to 100. I'm just going to say 90. Uh, I think it was 85 yesterday when I started filming. So the price goes up and down. That is an insane deal for a wireless in-ear monitor system that has six selectable channels and has XLR and quarter inch inputs in the back. In the picture, it says that it has earbuds. Mine did not include earbuds. I'm curious if mine just forgot them. So that I don't know. But again, I do have a video on $20 ones that you should check out if you do need to get some. Purchase links to all of these will be down in the description down below. The S1, the S2, and the S3 links will be down there. If you use those links, they are Amazon affiliate affiliate links. It doesn't cost you anything to use those links and it is a free way to support the channel. So I would appreciate it if you do decide to get this product based on this video if you use those links. Okay, so these, these products are really well built, especially for their price. I mean, you really can't beat, uh, I mean, you know, my Sennheiser system, I paid $1,000 for it. Entry-level sure and Sennheiser stuff is around $600 to $800. So this is a very, very affordable system for sure. It's definitely well thought out and well designed. So let's go over some of the pros and cons with this system. So starting first with the S1. So the pros, it's stereo or mono. You have a switch for that. It's battery powered. It's very affordable. Um, and it sounds good. The audio quality is definitely very good. It's also built really well. I mean, this thing is a, is a tank. I definitely, it does not feel cheap at all. I definitely would trust this from, you know, surviving a couple of falls and stuff like that. As far as pros for the S2, that's an insanely affordable price for an in-ear monitor system like this that accepts XLR and quarter inch is in the 500, you know, is in UHF frequency range. Most of these cheap ones are in 2.4. If you haven't watched my video on understanding 2.4 and why it can be problematic, you should watch that for sure. It's awesome that this one is in UHF. It is a stereo system, but you can run it in stereo or mono, but it's not a true stereo where you can use one transmitter to send two separate mixes to two receivers. If you don't know how to do that, I did a video on, on that, which you can check out. It's very minimalistic. I mean, it's the basics of what you need in, in your monitor system. And I like that you get a RF reading on the receiver itself. That's definitely a huge plus. It's one of the things that I love about my Sennheiser system, which is really cool. Okay, so as far as the cons of them, so with the S1, the only there's only two kind of cons I can think about with it. One is that uh, if you need to get quarter inch, you do need an adapter. It's not the end of the world. I like that the S2 has both. Again, you can just get these adapters. It's like five bucks, so it's not the end of the world. And then the only con that I noticed about this, the volume of what you get in here seems a little quiet. Maybe it's just with my setup. And again, that's not even that big of a con because if you know how to do proper gain staging, you don't have to worry about it. Going from like noon all the way up is not that big of a difference. What my advice to you would be dial it in with it about here at about like 10 o'clock. So that gives you enough room to turn up and enough room to turn down. Neither of them are deal breakers. You know, it's just kind of like, oh, it just seems to be a little bit more quieter. Just make sure you're gain staging properly and it won't be a problem. All right, as far as the cons for the S2, I will say that the audio quality is a tiny bit less. It does sound a little compressed, I guess, or a little squished and a little less low end. But I am gonna preface that by saying it, do, it sounds completely usable. It still sounds fine. If you're expecting that you're gonna spend 85 to 100 hundred dollars and have the best audio quality, you have to understand that you're saving, you know, this is a 10th of the price of, you know, my nice Sennheiser system. There's set the sacrifice is going to be somewhere. You do have to understand that for sure. That was, that was really the only con that I could think of with it. Again, it's still very usable. The audio can overload easily. I think if you sent too much of a signal into it, uh, and there's a little bit less low end. Again, if, if you're looking for budget stuff, you have to manage your expectations and realize you're not going to get thousand dollar level quality in it it is still completely usable in my opinion and so out of the cons one of the things i could say is that it has a very limited 
RF tuning bandwidth. You know, it has nine megahertz of tuning bandwidth and only six channels to choose from. That is not actually a con because that makes sense on the price of this product. It's not going to have, you know, a massive number of channels at this price point. That's actually what the S3 is for. You get a much wider RF tuning bandwidth and way more channels to choose with the S3. Part of what you are paying for as well as the stereo and stuff like that. Be sure to watch my video once that comes out. At this price point, six channels is actually awesome. I've reviewed other ones. The only one that I found that was actually cheaper than this doesn't even have a way to change channels. So keep that in mind. So some people would say, oh, it's a con to only have six channels. No, not at this price point. At this price point, that's an amazing deal, actually. So this gets me to my point of who is this for? The S1, I actually think you could completely gig with this one for sure. It's not a wireless. Like I said, for a drummer, it'll probably, you know, like sit right next to you or like down, you know, on the ground. You could you could put this on your belt or whatever, you know, if you wanted to. You can do that. I did a tour in 2019 in Europe and the band that we opened for, the headlining band, the front man actually had one of these. He actually had like a different one. It was just a mono one, but he was wired. You don't have to always be wireless. So this is a good option for that. Um, so for drummers or like keyboard players, I think this is really, a great option for you. It's also really great for practice situations. I don't know how many loud practice spaces you guys have been in. I've been in so many of them. And then when you switch to in-ear monitors, it is just a world of difference, especially if you're running everything direct, like, you know, with HX stomp and stuff like that. So I actually do think that this one is completely usable almost for any level of musician. Now with the S2, which is a wireless one, you can use it for practice or for like solo or like acoustic duo or trios. Those are what I think it could be used for if there's not a whole lot of instrumentation going on. If you do like a solo set, like just guitar and vocals or something like that, or just keys and vocals and stuff like that, this would be great. I think this actually would be awesome for you. If you're doing, you know, a full rock band, you know, a full five piece rock band and everyone's on wireless in your monitors, this is definitely is not the product for you. The cheaper wireless gear, if you start using too much of it all at once, you get dropouts. There's not enough options of frequencies with these cheaper systems. With cheaper wireless, there's less available channels to find a clear channel on. So with this system, so I wouldn't use more than three of these probably at once. And if you're starting to get to that level, you might want to start looking at the S3. So what I like about these is that they have, they have one that's a very entry level one that's meant more for solo acts, duos, practice. And then they have the S3, which is meant more for bands and stuff like that. But if you don't have a whole lot of wireless already, ready and you know you're not going to send a ton of instruments into it i think it's definitely completely usable especially again solos duos are like acoustic trios i think it's definitely possible to use this i brought the s3 to a bunch of my other shows at those shows we have at least like nine ten wireless going on at once the s2 would not be in the environment for that there's a ton of wireless with my band i brought the s3 because that's what the s3 is designed for the S2 would likely not have survived in that situation. It could have, I don't know. It, it, you know, it totally, it very much might have. An important thing for you guys to understand is that just because something is cheap does not mean you can buy 10 of them and expect it to work for your, you know, you're a 10 piece band or something like that. It's cheaper for a reason. Still completely usable, but not in those situations. So that's basically it. I think both of these products are very, very affordable, very usable, especially if you want to dip your toes into in-ear monitors, whether it's wired or wireless, you know, even just bringing this something like this to a rehearsal and just getting yourself used to uh, practice with in-ear monitors is definitely a good thing. Um, but like I said, one of you is going to win the S2 right here. Only requirements to enter is two things. One, you have to be a subscriber. So subscribe if you haven't already. And two, just leave a comment down below. Anything that you say in the comments, that you leave over the next five to seven days, you will be entered to win the contest and I will do the drawing next week. Be sure to not respond to scammers. I'm never ever going to ask you for money for shipping or anything like that. This is free. It's a giveaway for my subscribers. But just leave a comment down below and you will be entered to win the S2. So thank you guys again for watching. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you made it to the end of this video, just do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. I, I hate asking for it. It's always annoying, but it really does help feed the YouTube algorithm. So I would appreciate it. Don't forget that I am releasing the S3 video next week. So if you're watching this as this video comes out, be sure to subscribe to see that video when it comes out. If you're watching this video sometime in the future, check the pinned comments or in the description or at the end card. I will link the S3 video and all of those places. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos. I've done tons of other cheap gear reviews, as well as those cheap in-ear monitor earbuds. So check out some of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 
Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages at Scott Yule Music on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you guys again for watching. Thank you again to Anne Leon for sending me these products to check out. I really like what they're doing. Thank you guys for suggesting this product, and I'll see you guys next time.